This is Wakia, which means thunder in Lakota. Well, I was watching this movie last night. Once in a while I get one of these wild hairs and I watch some ridiculous movie, although, I don't know, something just told me, hey, let's check this out because uh, the apocalyptic thing is always fun, if nothing else. And it wasn't exactly apocalyptic in the sense of Let's say God wreaking havoc on the world and uh, creating what some refer to as Armageddon or the end times or all of that stuff. So I saw this movie and it was entitled The Day After Tomorrow. Now I'm sure you've all heard of this. In fact, I might have even watched it earlier in my life. And the premise was, really, the, the reason I liked it was, it was more about Mother Earth, Unsi Maka Sophia. It was more about the energy of Mother Earth wreaking havoc on uh, the populace, uh, and that included everybody. But the thing that kind of thrilled me, let's say, or the thing that I was attracted to was the, uh, let's say, justice or vengeance or whatever you want to call it from the planet in a natural form. So the, the, the plot or the premise was about an instant earth change or an instant storm that caused an ice age, let's put it that way. And it happened in not months or years or decades or millennium or anything like that, which we know it's happened before on Earth. But it happened in a matter of weeks, I guess, was the premise. And it was kind of fun to watch because what it was based on was... Now, see... When I watch these movies, I always go, okay, well, what what are they trying to tell us, or what is the agenda behind the movie? You see, it's, it's really hard to watch movies anymore that even spy thrillers, I mean, it's all based on Russia did it. I mean, this goes way back, or it's based on some other agenda that the powers to be, the uh, cabal or whatever you whatever you want to call them, archons in high places. Um, they always they always try to send you a message that fits their agenda. So this message it was obvious from the very get go that it was a a message concerning global warming. The big hoax, global warming, you know, so they can charge people carbon tax and countries carbon tax and make a lot of money via um, Al Gore, perpetrated by Al Gore and others. So anyway, as I'm watching the movie, though, I kind of disregarded that. I went, okay, well, I can see that agenda, but let's just look at this from purely a natural point of view. Let's have fun with it. Let's laugh about it. Let's, let's rejoice in, in Mother Earth destroying all the lunatics and brain dead people on the planet. See, and that was the fun thing, is watching everybody panic. I know, it sounds kind of weird. But it's not. Because I've talked so much about people being dumbed down, um, not aware, not in their higher consciousness, just let anything happen. Um, doesn't matter what kind of games or NLP or hypnosis or any of that stuff they're playing on you. Just go with the flow, man. It's okay. They just let it happen and not do a damn thing about it. Um, it's okay to be enslaved. 
all that good shit. Okay, let me turn this heater off. So, I actually got a kind of devilish, or uh, let's say, uh, to quote a friend, crossing the threshold of cruelty. <laughs> um, because, in a sense, you have to uh, enjoy that part of, let's say, I don't, I don't like the word justice, uh, let's say uh, recompense or whatever. Use another word. And I was laughing as this, uh, so the scenario was a, a giant piece of the Arctic ice shelf broke off went into the ocean, and immediately caused a change in the currents, the ocean flow, the ocean currents. Ocean has jet streams too. It's a liquid mass, but it's still a fluid mass, and it, it reacts a lot like the air, you know, with jet streams and cooling and this. And so the air, the jet stream, has a direct relationship to the fluid mass, the ocean, and so when the ocean cools, supposedly. Um, it causes giant weather changes, and it does, okay? There's no denying that. There's no denying that the ocean and the fluid mass, the air, are actually one one fluid mass, if you really want to look at it that way, and uh, one affects the other. So what happened was, um, the weather, this giant chunk of ice breaking off, changed the weather pattern dramatically in a matter of, like I said before, weeks. Started, It started days, it started incrementally but ramped up very quickly. And so the next thing you know, you got these giant, giant storms forming and the water cooling. And they're noticing the buoys in the, in the ocean uh, dropping, these scientists. And they're going, what, what the fuck's going on here? So... I mean, it's an interesting premise because, uh, well, you you, uh, you look at things like, uh, you know, the woolly mammoth that they found with green grass in its mouth, um, like it was frozen instantly. It wouldn't have frozen uh, in the cold because there wouldn't have been any green grass around to eat. So the, So the premise or the theory or the the thought is that the uh, woolly mammoth was eating some um, grass when it was warm, and all of a sudden, boom, here comes a instant ice age. Now, what would that be caused by? Well, could it be caused by something like this, or could it have been uh, a meteor uh, swooping down out of nowhere and changing the climate but see if a meteor came down and changed the climate it would create like a nuclear winter and that would take a while i don't think it would be to the degree where animals would get frozen instantly with green grass in their mouth so anyway it's an interesting concept um could that happen well i've read several books from explorers who I admire. Can't remember the names of them right now, but I have several books that uh, are about the Southwest and the Anasazi and changes that, you know, uh, the indigenous Pueblo people may have gone through and why they disappeared and why civilizations disappear. And of course, all this stuff is hidden from us. It's not something that they will readily admit to, like, let's say, an in instant change. But the, th the thing that intrigued me about this was a remedy, let's say, a remedy for all the foolishness 
because it showed in the movie that people were going along in their every day to day uh bullshit mind numbing unconsciousness, including the powers to be they were they were kind of snubbing this scientist that said, "Hey, this is going to happen," and they were going, "Well, we can't do this, and we can't do that that's not politically uh feasible and so the doubting Thomases were in the middle of a fucking shitstorm real quick because as these storms grew and you could see the guys, <laughs> the show guys in outer space in the space station looking down, <clears throat> there was these large swirls, <clears throat> excuse me, there was these large swirls, storms like you see in these uh, hurricane watcher airplanes that look down and it's just monstrous and you have this huge wall and so these storms kept forming and I think there were three major storms and they formed off the coast of uh, one formed off the coast of LA and the other formed off the coast of New York the two coasts east and west coast and they came in and these were the kind of storms that were uh, basically rainstorms and snowstorms on steroids. In other words, when they came in, they froze everything. If somebody was walking down the street and this thing came in, they would freeze instantly and their hand would fall off or whatever. Or at one point in the movie, there were giant chunks of ice. And before the, the real big storm came, there were giant chunks of ice and hailstones this big uh, falling down. One hit a cop right on the head. Oh, I laughed my ass off on that one. Because to me, that represented the authority that represented uh, the power brokers, the, uh, the elite that think they can get away with anything. Well, here it was. Everybody was panicking. Everybody was freaking out. Everybody was in a state of disbelief. So these are the kind of elements that I liked and I was laughing at. I was having a good time. Yeah, you know, this is much deserved. Uh, let's see how they handle Mother Nature. Let's see how their all their rockets and their supposed uh, scientific geoengineering or weather engineering can stand up against Mother Nature. It can't. Mother Nature is powerful. Mother Nature is, well, let's just take, for instance, as a pilot <clears throat> and a flight instructor, I always told my students, and I was always told, never fly near a thunderstorm ever, or do not fly into the center of a thunderstorm, because the pressure gradient in there is so intense and the updrafts and downdrafts will rip you a new asshole basically i mean you're you're not going to survive i mean there's even been big jets that were flying near uh these things like in japan and stuff that just disappeared uh they were just shredded in in an instant okay so the power just within a thunderstorm Incidentally, I was a certified meteorologist at one time, too, because I was putting in a weather station in Bullhead, Arizona, and I uh, had to pass a meteorology test, and I did that with flying colors. So I kind of know a little bit about weather and what they're doing with the geoengineering and what's possible and what isn't possible, that kind of thing. But to me, anything's possible. If anybody's going to pull a fast one on you, it's going to be nature, you know. Um, so in regards to solving things on the planet, the planet has so much power. Uh, the planet can change at a moment's notice. I've talked about magnetic pole shifts before. Edgar Casey talked about magnetic pole shift. 
And actually there is a magnetic pole shift going on in kind of slow motion right now. The true north designation on the compass has shifted, uh, I don't know, one or two degrees. But see, that's, that's not, uh, that's not scary, shifting one or two degrees. But here's the deal, and I've talked about this before. If the pole shift, uh, if there is a pole shift, it's like two magnets. Now, if you take two magnets and you put them together, and they snap together, okay, well then the polarity is arranged in such a way that they're drawn to each other. But if you try to force a magnet against a magnet, if you've ever done that, try it sometime. As you're forcing these two magnets together, one flips like that, boom, and it just flips in an instant. So if you look at the magnetic poles or the polarity on Mother Earth, when a pole shift happens, that's how it would happen. Yeah, it might incrementally slowly go for a while, but when it gets to that point, point where, oops, you know, the magnet's facing the other way and flip, it flips like that. So that's, that's one example of the forces that are at work in nature, okay, is this magnetic polarity, which happens on all levels. Now, can you imagine, <clears throat> can you imagine that happening? And it, what would it do to your mind? Well, it would immediately affect the pineal gland, <clears throat> which operates on a magnetic principle. Your whole body is a polarity. So if all the polarity around you instantly flips and changes, <laughs> oh boy. Um, talk about a change. Uh, talk about a, a change. And <clears throat> so I was interested in, in this movie just for, just for the fact that we got a bunch of dumb shits walking around on the earth and we got a bunch of people that are all full of themselves leaders on an egotistical level and they just think that they're they can the rules don't affect them the rule of law and all that kind of thing well i got news for you how about a rule of nature how about the rule of nature how about her rules and her desires and her uh, intelligence. You don't think for a minute that, uh, let's say this Ukraine war going on, or any war for that matter, or any other number of things, constantly puncturing, constantly puncturing, and constantly blowing up. You know, how would you like it if, 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 you were mother or you were the feminine or you were let's say a woman and all of a sudden you saw little things running around on the surface of your skin uh, blowing things up okay making giant craters causing uh, earthquakes causing all kinds of problems okay so you got you got uh, one side in the in the war is firing off they say 60,000 rounds a day. 30 to 60,000 rounds a day. The other one's firing off. The other side is firing off maybe 7,000. 155 millimeter cannons or uh, bombs. Then that doesn't even take into account the glided bombs from supersonic bombers and the... Uh, the hypersonic missiles that are at work now. So here you, here you got all these people fighting over an ideal, fighting over an ideal or, uh, let's say, what they view as an existential threat. But what are they doing? They're, they're severely dissing Mother Earth, basically. They're dissing Mother Earth. They're dissing the planet. So, 
the way I look at it is anything that comes upon them from their fucking foolishness that they're doing, they deserve. They deserve it. And here I am living on the planet, and I may not be in that mindset. I may not. I'm a worshiper of the goddess. I'm a worshiper, if you want to call it that. Let's put it just this, this way, supreme reverence for my surroundings and the consciousness that permeates the feminine goddess energy consciousness from the planet that permeates all of us and is the mother of all of us. I am totally tuned into that, but how many people are tuned into that? How many people are oh, even aware or even have any kind of feeling at all? So there's a, there's a side to me that says, bone up, baby. Let's get on it. What the fuck are you doing? You need to educate yourself, and if I can do it, and others can do it, then why can't you do it? There's no excuses for this. There's no excuses. You can come from a very, very low, even uh, in, indoctrinated, inculcated Christian philosophy mindset or whatever. And you have a certain amount of intelligence. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's do some research. Let's do some reading. Let's do some uh, reflecting on what this is really all about. Let's do some reflecting on what this is really all about. Who is your, let's say, savior? Who is, who, who's going to save humanity? Who's going to save the Anthropos? Who's going to save your sweet ass, okay? If I was going to bow down to and revere and pray to anything, it wouldn't be some off-planet God in the sky, but it would be through a planetary Tantra, and I've talked about this before, a planetary Tantric uh, connection <clears throat> with Mother Earth. So anyway, I you know I uh, I use the movie okay the day after tomorrow well hell you know bring it on <laughs> hate to use that term since board George Bush used it but uh, it might be appropriate in this uh, in this setting and what's going on now um, at this point. Um, you know, uh, this this is long overdue, and and I've talked about cycles before too. I've talked about the Kali Yuga, and I've talked about cycles that uh, have arisen from looking at past um, geology. You know, uh, ice ice cores, and uh, just things that have happened in the past, and then then you got the uh, ancient prophecies from Mayan people and from Sumerian people and the Hopi people and the Pueblo people and you just have you have these these stories okay <clears throat> that indicate that something like this could happen and see this is not an apocalyptic mindset this is not um, oh God's going to punish us and because we didn't worship in a certain way or we didn't uh, toe the line, um, since we're all sinners, since we're all uh, whatever, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? that That's a completely different mindset inculcated by archontic entities, and I've talked about this at length. It's a mindset that is uh, uh, an agenda that has been from an agenda that has been created to divert attention from the real deal, okay, which is Mother Earth. I would, I would trust that. I would trust the cosmos. 
<coughs> excuse me, I would trust the cosmos and I would trust the planetary energy much more than I trust my fellow man. Um, that's your real friend. You want to have a real friend? Let's let's buddy up with the uh, Shakti energy within and without and uh, try to realize that there is shelter in the storm. There is shelter in the storm. You will be sheltered if you're on the right consciousness, in the right consciousness, on the right frequency. That's my take. Um, and so, you know, again, this movie gave me something to talk about. My feelings and uh, my anger concerning uh, what's being done on the planet and what's being done to uh, completely uh, destroy and intimidate and uh, sabotage, that's the word I'm looking for, sabotage humankind, okay? Humankind has to realize that they are caretakers, caretakers in a sense, like the indigenous people say. We're here to take care of the earth. We're not here to destroy it. And so all the stuff that you see surrounding us, swirling around us, all the chaotic mind games and uh, deception and uh, war, it's all irrelevant. It's almost like not my circus, not my monkeys. But I'll tell you whose circus and monkeys it is, is Mother Earth, and she ain't going to put up with it too much longer. We're way overdue on a on a natural level, on a, a level of cycles and seasons and times and events, way overdue. And it's not about fear, because you want to embrace this concept. You want to embrace it as a sign of destroying the evil intentions or the evil uh, machinations of the Archons. Anyway, just waxing on and waxing off like the Karate Kid, you know. <laughs> uh, if there's any truth in this uh, that is truthful for you or makes you stop and think, so be it. I'll leave it there today. Adios.